Live from the ESPN 1280 studios in San Luis Obispo, it's time. It is Living the Run. We're not just chewing the fat, we're getting rid of it. We are your home for everything health and fitness. Living the Run is being brought to you by Fascia Balance, Pinnacle Training Systems, Peak Performance Massage, and the chiropractic team at Slow Wellness Center. Here are your hosts for Living the Run, Rex Stevens and Paul Tarek. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Living the Run. Happy May 30th, the last Wednesday of the month. Paul, we're approaching summer. I am Rex Stevens, host along with co-host, Mr. Paul Tarek. I'm glad we're finally approaching summer as the weather is cooperating. Uh, it has been great the last two days, and uh, I just, I've just i been out enjoying the Central Coast. Hey. Actually, actually being active, believe it or not. A lot to enjoy. Remember, uh, listeners, you can find us on livingtherun.com, facebook.com, and twitter.com. You know, with the summer coming, Paul, it's uh, great to have the guests that we're going to have on today. We got uh, Trevor Merrim. Uh, master trainer over there at Kennedy Fitness, teaching you ways to get out, move the body efficiently and successfully. And then we got a team that uh, is some of you have heard of running uh, the Mud Mash events. We had a Mud Mash event just a couple weeks ago, and this uh, couple also runs the slow, uh, slow op climbing gym as well. So uh, tons of activity, tons of possibilities, and this will be a fun group to talk to uh, today and uh, explore what we can do more with our bodies out on the Central Coast. Yeah, I've been uh, I've been interested in that mud mash. I, I almost got convinced to do it this year, but uh, to be honest, I, mud in my shoes not not something. I'm water running with watery shoes not something I'm excited about. Well, I remember Paul, you did uh, after you uh, finished your Olympic runs and and uh, decided to give up the uh, track and field and retire from that. You went over to Japan and did some kind of crazy events over there as well. Any time that you had to have water or mud in the shoes in any of those Japanese events? No. Well, if you lost, you ended up with water or mud in your shoes. But uh, but the whole mud match, the, it's just, you know, the whole time. Just, it, uh, yeah, that, it just makes me uncomfortable thinking about it. Can we get that sound effect one more time, please? <laughs> Well, what I'm wondering is, is it the noise that bothers you more, or is it the feel yeah, of the, the feel. mud in the shoes? It's just the feel. It's the, the feel. The sound effect was just for the to, to add to the uh, the the uh, image in your head. I was thinking, you know, I heard a lot about those uh, events, the mud mash events, and so forth. And apparently, there was a a bunch of groups that uh, did teams there and did couples things. I was I was wondering, Paul, do you think Shiloh would be in? Oh, she wants for doing to, she a, wants for doing to a do couples. It. She wants to do it. I am I am the one's like, no, I don't want to get my feet muddy. Yeah, <laughs> it just doesn't it doesn't sound comfortable to me I'm sorry it's like having that thing in your sock you know you wash your socks they're all clean you put them on and you, oh, you got a little fuzzy in there and you can feel it all day that drives me nuts <laughs> well I was uh, I don't uh, want to find a fish in my shoe <laughs> running there's like a frog in my yeah it's terrible that'd be more like stand by me maybe you'll find a leech uh, a, a leech, leech someplace <laughs> see there you go a, a, another reason I don't want to do it thank you, you you've sealed the deal <laughs> hey when we talk to uh, these guys maybe they'll be able to convince you of why the mud mash will be a good event it's interesting to me as I start to think about athletics and fitness and the things that are going on out there. We had the traditional sports and that's what I grew up playing, you know, the basketballs, the baseballs, the footballs, but you know, we've kind of gone into this big deal of X games now and then I see what you were doing over there in Japan, more obstacle course based stuff. And now we've got uh, you know, the CrossFit uh, games, we've got uh, things like mud mash events. It's getting a little bit uh but more diverse out there and creative with uh, how we can c compete in the fitness world. I think, you know, Paul, it just brings more people or more contestants possibly into the the mix. Exactly, I think it's a great idea. It's just anything that anything that's going to inspire people to be active. Any, anything can be. You know, before it was like you said, it was the the, the big three: football, basketball, and baseball. And if you played soccer, uh, well, maybe you'll play football next year, kind of thing. You know, and uh, there there wasn't a lot there wasn't a lot out there for people who were like, yeah, this the whole competitive team sport thing looks fine for other people, but it's not for me. There wasn't really anything for those people, and now there there's an infinite amount of possibilities out there so I think it's a great uh, I think it's a great thing anytime we come up with new ways to get people active yeah I got to brag a little bit on my uh, my youngest one you know I, I think you start living the run type of lifestyle early in life uh, you've got a son I got two and my three-year-old uh, three years that old like a challenge and three Rex. months that, that sounded like a challenge when you, you said that like, it, you got one I have two yeah. 
just I'm just getting that out there. <laughs> Not a challenge, Shiloh. But uh, three years, three months, and uh, you know he, he was riding a two wheel bike all by himself now, uh, cruising up and down the driveway. He's going after his brother. And I thought the best part of this story was, uh, and I hadn't I didn't know this until he actually ate it the first time as a three year old, not really paying attention. Uh, he did hit a curb and he went down and kind of landed on his arm. I went up to him. I said, uh, Leighton, how you doing? Uh, is your arm okay? He says, Dad, I didn't hurt. I was wearing my helmet. <laughs> and I asked him, he says, Leighton, how did you know that? He says, well, Kellen told me, my older brother told me that as long as I wear my helmet, it won't hurt. And so the whole afternoon, every time he ate it, didn't matter if he scraped his leg or not, it was, I'm wearing my helmet, <laughs> Dad. There's no pain. Power of positive thinking, Paul. Power of positive thinking. That's going to be great. There's going to be a bone <laughs> sticking out one day. And he's like, it doesn't hurt. I had my helmet on. Or it's going to go the other way and Kellen's going to figure out that, well, he'll do anything I tell him. He believes anything I tell him. <laughs> and it's going to go downhill quickly. It, yes. it, it could get dangerous uh, for sure. Did, did you see the video, Max? He was in here like eight seconds. Eight seconds. And he's like, oh, check out this video. My kid's riding a bike. <laughs> three years, three months. He's, he's rocking it. I missed out on that gem. You missed out on the gem? Oh, maybe we can get that up on Living the Run. Yeah, we'll put that on Living the Run website. Uh, again, look for us on livingtherun.com, facebook.com. You're listening here to Living the Run on ESPN 1280. Well, one other guest that's going to come on today, Trevor Merrim. He's a master trainer over there at Kennedy Club Fitness. And he's got an interesting kind of thought, uh, Paul. I thought I'd bring it out to you. Is, is He says that there is no right way to exercise size, but there sure are a lot of wrong ways. No right way to exercise, but a lot of wrong ways to exercise. Well, well, agree think, or disagree? Uh, I, I would agree, and, and I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I think what he may be getting at is there's not a cookie cutter method that's going to say, oh, this is exactly what you need to do, and you're going to be in shape. You know, everybody's different, everybody has different body types, and everybody responds differently to different types of activity. Uh, some people do well more anaerobic activity, some people do well strictly sticking to aerobic activity, uh, and, you know, he, as, as a good trainer, you know, they should always be looking to find uh, find out what motivates people and what types of activities they respond to. Yeah, I think so, you know, and uh, when you start to think living the run, I, I really think that you have to say that there is a variety of, of things to do. One of the best books I ever read was a book called Play, and it kind of explored this idea of getting out and getting active, but doing something that you like to do, and they actually explored uh, people who were doing, uh, one of the things they looked at was is people who were doing 60 minutes of exercise on a machine, and they looked at it and said, if the person really didn't enjoy it, like they're getting up at 6 a.m., 60 minutes on a treadmill. One, they didn't like being up at 6 a.m. Two, they didn't like being 60 minutes on a treadmill. They actually didn't see the same health benefits that you would if you had somebody that just flat out enjoyed the activity that they were doing. So there's like clearly a mental state to this as well as the physical. Uh, sometimes difficult to measure, but uh, an awesome thing. And I think it just goes to tell us that, uh, you know, if you go to a yoga class and it's not your favorite thing, it doesn't mean yoga is good or bad uh, or that you were doing it right or wrong, but that maybe uh, another environment would be the environment to maximize your your health, maximize your performance. Yeah, you can't, uh, you know, the one, there is one thing to think about though, is you can't be, in, you can't be inspired every day, or it's very hard to be inspired every day. So there are some days you need to go and you just need to put the time in and do, uh, you know, do the workout. But if you go there every day like that, you know, it's not a, it's not a prison, a prison sentence. You don't get credit for time served. It's not like oh, I went there for six weeks and I did things I didn't really want to be doing. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't involved. I wasn't motivated by it. Uh, I wasn't engaged in what I was doing. Oh, but look at me, I'm in shape. It doesn't work like that. You know, you, you got to be engaged. You got to be motivated. And you got to be really uh, behind what you're doing and believing in it. Absolutely. I, I got to, it was, it was great. I got to hear a guy this morning, just flat out engaging, used to be head of the uh, Blue Angels, uh, was, uh, was the, the main guy there for two years. And he kind of talked about that uh, each day, bring in your A game, uh, each day trying to experience something new. And, and if you just get too repetitious, it gets kind of sour. And he talked about people saying they had been uh, doing the same job for 15 years. He says, no, actually, you've just been repeating the same thing over <laughs> year after year, you know, and it's not actually, you're not creating anything new. And so that's what people get uh, stale. They, uh, and they just don't seem to, to perform at the higher level. So you're right. It's not about a, a time clock. It's not about just checking in, but it's about trying to find new things. It's about getting creative. It's about creating variety in your workouts and, and maximizing yourself in that way. But yeah, I'm interested in talking to uh, Trevor because I know he's done some amazing things with uh, different clients and uh, heard some really remarkable stories. And I think that he is able to change some of that uh, creativity for them, be a, another mind for them and then be a coach. Essentially, I'm sure you had that too, where you got into workouts uh, where you thought, geez, this is a rut. We've been doing the same thing for a month and 
uh, I need to mix it up to get some new performance out of my body. Yeah, we always had a saying, uh, borrow some motivation from, you know, borrow some motivation from your training partner. You know, it, you'd complain to the coach, hey, coach, uh, you know, I don't, I don't really want to do this today. I don't feel like it. I'm just not, in, you know, I'm not really into it. And he's like, hey, go borrow some motivation from, uh, you know, Boyles or go mo- borrow some motivation from Jamil. You know, get over there and, uh, you know, they'll get you going. And, and it's true. You get over there and you don't really want to be there, but then you see them doing it and, and maybe it's, guilt that gets you motivated maybe it's i don't want this guy to get better than me that gets you motivated but uh, whatever it is you know you just got to get through that day yeah it's, a, it's just it's, it is it's a simple commitment but uh again it, the, key, the key is that variety but again if you haven't seen that book play play is really a fantastic book and it really gets after the positivity and you know the hope is is that you take some of the pressure off people i think one of the hardest things for people is is they feel that pressure that says hey if i didn't get in for 60 minutes it wasn't enough. If I didn't get that full half hour, or if I didn't make the entire class, it, today was a failure, and that negativity starts to starts to creep in. One of the things I've done, and, and I've always tried to encourage people to do, is, is find a 10-minute workout that you like. Find a 20-minute one. Find one with weights. Find one without equipment. Find one in different environments so that you can feel very positive about what you've done at the end of the day and not beat yourself up over it, which seems to be the uh, you know negating factor when it comes down to it because now people go well I only got in two days this week I only got in X and it starts in a negative spin and then they don't build any anywhere from there I couldn't remember his name I just had to look it up but there was a uh, there was an Ironman competitor 80 years old his name's Lou Hollander uh, and his motto was go anaerobic every day you know get, get out there and do something uh, don't just put you know 40 minutes in of jogging and, and breathing you know breathing a little bit hard but he says go anaerobic every day to the point where you have to stop and catch your breath and, and that's his motto the guy's 80 years old, did an Iron Man, and he's in incredible shape. <laughs> Lou, Lou Hollander. <laughs> The thing with going anaerobic for so many people is that soreness that often comes with those workouts. And, uh, you know, I, it, for his mental framework, again, it's going to be a great thing. Uh, certainly, it's not going to be the recipe for everyone. And, again, I think that's a message we're trying to get. And I'm sure Trevor will expand on that is, is that the message cannot be the same for every person. Each person is unique. It's, it's individual. And if you remember Dr. Brandon Brock that was in here just a few weeks ago said we need to, uh, I think in his words, is we need to practice the art of individualized training. Treatment. And in this case, I think Trevor might talk to us about the art of individualized training. Uh, what I'm interested in is, is how in the heck do you train for a mud mash? That, that's that's going to be the one that uh, I, I want to talk uh, talk about here uh, shortly. I, I think the thing to remember is Dr. Brock may be a doctor, but Lou is 80 <laughs> and he does the Iron Man. I mean, for the love of God, man. He's going anaerobic every day. He's guy's 80. He's 80. Maybe I didn't stress it. Did I repeat that already? He's 80. Not 76, not 78. No, 80. <laughs> Iron Man, Rex. Iron Man. Iron Man. Uh, you know, it's hard to it's hard to debate with uh, Iron Men. Uh, those guys. What, what, uh, yeah. What do you say? <laughs> I want to do it this way. That's too bad. I'm an Iron Man. I'm 80 years old. Do it this way. Okay. That's good idea. You, yeah. You really you really made me see it in a different light. <laughs> Yeah, actions do speak louder than words. When you see somebody produce like that, I was fortunate enough to go to Kona last year uh, and watch that Ironman. And uh, what an amazing event. Uh, people with uh, disabilities, uh, people of all ages, uh, just absolutely performing at an incredible, incredible level. And when you start to think about those, you know, we had Barb Lemoyne Singer on uh, a couple weeks ago, and we were talking about some kind of smaller distances. But here we're talking about, you know, two mile swim, right? I think they're going two mile, a two and a half mile swim. 112 on the bike and then a marathon uh, to end that whole thing and, and in Kona I'm telling you that course is nasty and it gets warm. Don't they run across a lava field at one point? <laughs> it's like any 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 race you run with a course description is like oh we just make a left here and there's oh there's seven miles of lava field you know like oh that sounds good all right oh that'll be easy on the shins you know lava fi- lava field. Again. Wait, have you ever flown into flown into uh, nope. Hawaii there? Yeah, you flying in I swear you know you, you got to think that you've gotten on a rocket ship and ended up on the moon. Uh, it's it's crazy. Crazy. You know, you look and you can't find any plant life anywhere where they land. You all you see is lava rock, and you start to wonder. I mean, did, did I get a really good deal on my ticket because I'm not in Hawaii? Where yeah, there's a at? reason why uh, Travelocity had this for as cheap as they did. Uh, but uh, it's, just, it's a tremendous island, and when you start to hit the diversity of it, and uh, Hilo and Kona. But uh, what a fun, fun race, uh, fun time, and uh, just a neat thing to see that type of endurance. But you know what? We, you're listening again, uh, ESPN. 12- 
Brady uh, living the run. We're going to have a couple guests on here uh, coming up next. And Yishai Horowitz, Kristen Horowitz, uh, managers and directors of uh, All Out Events here on the Central Coast. Also partners in Slow Op Climbing. Uh, just guys that are, are, are pushing the envelope here on the levels of fitness, on the levels of getting outside and getting active. I'm excited to talk to them. Uh, we will hit them next. with Living the Run. Welcome back to Living the Run. Follow us, guys, on livingtherun.com, facebook.com, and twitter.com. We are super excited to be joined by uh, an awesome couple. You know, Kristen, I've talked to you a few times. You are flat out feels like you're on the run all the time. But we got (laughs) Kristen Horowitz and uh, Yishai Horowitz, uh, two people. You guys own All Out Events. Uh, you can find them on alloutevents.com, uh, adventure racing, mud mashes, all this kind of stuff. Thanks for coming in studio. Of course. Thank you for having us. <laughs> well, you know, when I, we look at uh, these events, and we were talking to, I was talking to Paul earlier about it, it seems like the events uh, for fitness anymore are getting more creative. They're getting more out there, which seems like a fantastic thing because we're, we're getting more people that can participate. Uh, how did you guys get into this? And, uh, you know, give, give us a little history on uh, how this uh, came about here on the Central Coast. All right. Um, it actually started out as an internship uh, at Cal Poly through ESPN uh, Radio 1280, and we did did the uh, first annual Central Coast Adventure Challenge out at Santa Margarita Lake, Lake. and uh, it just kind of grew from there. Uh, we we grew that event and uh, added some more. We had the San Luis Mountain Run, and then we started the Mud Runs at Laguna Lake, and those were super. Uh, those were uh, super fun and successful, and we also did the uh, Morro Bay Triathlon, which you know, kind of more the. I guess it's standard triathlon, but we had the kayaking in there with a twist. Okay, so you, you've got you got a bunch of these events going, but you've you've competed in these events too. Yes, is this correct? Yes. So you just tell me, you know, running the events versus competing in the events. How does this whole thing differ? Because I got to think that there's stress on both ends, but the stress has to be completely different. Yeah, I, I'd say putting them on is much harder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, putting them on is by far more difficult than you know showing up. You have your training down. You know, you have your your weekly schedule for it, and you come to an event, and you put your race gear on, and you go. And when you're finished, you're finished, and you go home and you rest. And uh, putting on an event is just months and months and months of prep, and you know, leading up to the event is you know very very little sleep and uh, just rehearsing everything in your head, and and then it goes, and then there's cleanup and emails afterwards and surveys, and it's it's a much different process. And, and, and that's precisely why uh, Kristen seems like she's running around with her head cut off, right? Every time I talk to her, this is the cleanup process and all that that kind of stuff. In, in all honesty, like what he was talking about, we, we put on one of the more popular 12-hour adventure races. Um, it's the ninth year, the one that he started with ESPN and is now our own thing. Um, the the racers go for 12 hours and they say it's harder than Ironman. Um, you've got to run, you've got to kayak, you've got to um, mountain bike, and it's not just like mountain biking on trail, but it's, you know, legitimate course uh, rides that are out here that our pros will do um, and so we get up early and we make sure that it's running and maybe if we're lucky we're set up by midnight so we can sleep for two hours before we get it going so then the people show up at six we've been there for two hours and then maybe my favorite is that once everyone's finished we've got to pack the whole venue up and the racers will forget that they've uh, got more equipment on on course so then we just have to sit there and hope they come so <laughs> well you get to go home and have you know dinner and they're like come to out come out to the bars with us no and this, so the game doesn't end for 48 hours afterwards so it's definitely an endurance i lose a lot of weight every time we have an event how do you, how do you train how do you train for one of those mud runs like the part where you're like crawling in like 12 inches of mud like under net or well first of all i, I have to get 100 meters of crawling under the net in here let me just get on the mud here first off all i have to i have to tell you guys that you guys are both huge wusses for for talking about how oh you know i just don't like my feet getting wet oh yeah and oh i don't like 
a smushing noise. And in all honesty, I didn't understand it until we started building the course and we're out in Laguna Lake at our October one and we're in the reeds and wetsuits with loppers squealing because what it really is is it's you've got to remember like when you were a kid and you were running around in the backyard of people's property that you weren't supposed to be there or in the creeks like San Luis Creek and just doing whatever. You gotta channel that. Just remember that your mom's gonna do your laundry when you're done and it's fun again. And my mom's not gonna do my laundry. And it's <laughs> but not just the laundry, it's the squishing of the mud in the toes. Get and over and it, that's running. what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> but actually, you know, one of the things we do do is we, we partnered with Gymnazo out of Kennedy and they actually have training videos online. So if you're interested in training to get physically prepared, they've actually got a nine week program along with videos and things like that. So. Well, well, give us a taste of that. I mean, uh, you, you guys who competed probably in mountain biking looks like running, some of the more traditional, maybe triathlon type of things, but what is the difference, uh, the key differences that you put into your training uh, to compete, say, at Wildflower Triathlon versus Mud Mash at Santa Margarita Lake? Yeah, uh, big, big difference. Uh, you know, triathlon, you have the standard swim, bike, run. You can do the brick training, you know, where you do two things. You can do a trick training, where you do all three, or you can just work on one discipline at a time, and you know it's going to be one of those kind of elements in it and it's a very I guess uh, calculated training program that goes into a a standard triathlon Um, with a mud run it's well the the one up at Santa Margarita Ranch was a uh, it was a 10 mile course and lots of elevation gain and uh, so you have you have basically the half marathon training that you need but then you also need some upper body strength because we have like climbing elements uh, you need some swimming ability because you have some swimming elements you need you just kind of need to to be able to grin and bear it and get through things and crawl through things and jump off uh, you know diving boards that are up pretty high and we have a 14 foot uh, we had a 14 foot jump that you had to get off of so you have to kind of uh, you know, get the uh, courage up. <laughs> yeah, you got you to gotta be willing, willing to uh, take on just about any obstacle. I, w- I would think that uh, instead of like formulating a training plan for that, the best thing is just to have your buddy blindfold you, <laughs> drive you somewhere out near Pozo, point you in the general direction of San Luis, and say, "Go in a straight line." <laughs> like whatever you come to, just do that. You know, oh, it's a rock, climb it. Oh, it's a river, you got to swim across it. Oh, it's mud, wade through it. That's oh, did you find accurate. a bike, ride it. You know, it's like whatever it takes to get back to point, you know, point A to point B. You know, it's interesting. Interesting though is they, the the mud runs have become so popular that there are stars coming up in it and people are building obstacles in their backyards where they practice on walls and they. I dug a big hole. Ropes. I filled it with yeah. water. Yeah, no, they yeah, really do. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Like I'm on this Facebook group where they just discuss like the merits of each kind of sock and what shoe to wear with it, and it's becoming a, a well, real thing. That was so. like that Ninja Warrior when it started out over mm-hmm. in Japan, and now it's really big here. It's like people are building these things in their backyard. And I'm, I mean, it's it's impressive. It's adult you, play. That's you what got, it yeah. is. I mean, it's like an excuse to yeah. just get out and be. Like, ah, yay. <laughs> exactly. Play I mean, out. I'm telling you, you look at something and, and you go, I can't do that. I guess I have to do that. And, like, that's the difference is that you just don't know. And so you've got to have a little bit less of a rigid attitude about it when you're doing it. Same thing with adventure racing. Well, now, you guys are involved in slow op climbing gym as well. And I got to think that some of that climbing stuff carries over real nice uh, to some of that upper body strength that you were talking about, coordination, stability. Uh, how about uh, getting up a little bit higher, fear of heights? You know, so those people gump, jumping off that 14 footer. Uh, tell us a little bit about your involvement in slow op climbing and uh, how that might might uh, play into uh, becoming a better mud mud runner. A mud runner. Uh, yeah. So slow op climbing started about nine years ago. It was uh, it was actually it started in Alamo storage unit uh, out here on Tank Farm Road, and uh, just a bunch of us got together and decided to pitch you know, pitch in some money and build a little cooperative climbing gym. And that's how it got the name Slow Op because it was a co-op, um, and then it it grew and grew and grew. And when Kristen came on board, it grew even faster and bigger. And uh, I can't believe that. I mean, with, with her with her lack of energy, I mean, how, she has how no energy. Even, yeah, she's yeah. got none. I mean, uh, how could she have gotten something fired up like that? <laughs> she's on tranquilizers all the time. <laughs> just so, uh, yeah, so it, you know, it just grew and. Uh, membership went from about 24 to over 800, so uh, that that's pretty significant and pretty amazing for us. Um, as far as climbing goes, climbing is 
an incredible amount of core strength involved. You know, there's there's definitely upper body strength, and the balance aspect that you can gain from it is it's probably unmatched for for most sports. I mean, you know, gymnastics probably compares, and you know, some other things like surfing is probably you know up there. Um, so I would I would say that it definitely contributes to being a, a more well-rounded athlete if you throw climbing in the mix. I mean, you're, you're you're meant to climb things. I mean, little kids climb things. Like you were saying, you know, your son was up on that uh, the chain that link. Chain link. Yes. yes. Like kids like to climb. Kids are little monkeys. <laughs> they like to climb. Hey, you're listening on ESPN 1280. You're listening to Living the Run. <clears throat> We're talking about to uh, Yisha and Kristen Horowitz, uh, owners of um, both the uh, outdoor events as well as uh, here running mud mashes and, and all these different events, uh, as well as slow op climbing here. Uh, you know, Kristen, you corrected me before. I let the listeners here know a little bit about this climbing stuff. I'm looking at this guy uh, who was up on Half Dome. He's got no equipment. <laughs> He's wearing a plaid long sleeve shirt. He's got khaki shorts on, a little fan pack and he ease up halfway up half dome what first of all crazy maybe <laughs> but what is this called what uh, with all these different types of climbing what are they doing at slow up climbing and let's get this uh, this this terminology right thank you so much for the opportunity because <laughs> those of you listening this this personally hurts every climber when you ask them if they free climb um, <laughs> so free <laughs> climb is, is yeah. yeah that's like dirty words yeah, yeah. Um, basically what he's describing is somebody who has no equipment holding them on to the rock or protecting them and that's called soloing you're climbing by yourself there's nobody ensuring Oh, free soloing. I apologize. Free soloing. I call okay. it soloing, but yeah. yeah. But what free climbing really is, is you're climbing well assistance. There's also aid climbing. So when people climb El Cap or Half Dome and you hear about that and they spend weeks on it, those people are, are sitting on the actual equipment and using it to pull them up. So that's why it's not free climbing. It's aid climbing. So when you go, hey, oh, you're free climbing. No, you're not. You're free soloing. So now you will sound smarter and better when you see people up at Bishop's Peak. How about bouldering? <laughs> bouldering is the same, um, people same are thing. People heights. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, big guys. Uh. Um, bouldering is is very much like free soloing, only it's much shorter distances. That if you you fall, you're generally pretty safe. Um, they can get pretty high depending on how good you are and how hard you want to take it's it. A big so. boulder on the way to Morro Bay. I mean, it's got it's got to be a drop. <laughs> I see a guy like that. I see a guy like that. You say free soloing, right? Half dome, no commanding. and it just makes me excited for government run health care when and when when you know, there's no accountability. I just I love that. It doesn't matter if he gets hurt. We're all paying for it. Totally fine. Sorry, I had to interject that. Paul, Paul always loves to bring these things back to politics, and we've got to bring it back around to what we're talking about. And I think really what we're talking about is is Paul Tarek, former Olympic decathlete, doing doesn't ten, like squishy shoes. Doing, yeah. doing <laughs> ten different events is a, a perfect, perfect specimen, perfect experience, and perfect competitor for one of your events. Is it, but he doesn't like squishy shoes, and we encourage people who like squishy shoes. <laughs> <laughs> we encourage squishy shoes. Even, even mash, our triathlon, squishy shoes yeah. are encouraged. In our triathlon, you have to run through a creek, you know? Like, no, so. we put a bridge over it. Yeah, but some people do. Put, so. a, put a bridge you've over it. You've got to have a little bit more risk. I'll run out of my way for the bridge. Yeah. Like, there, most, yeah. people, most people run like, you know, the 5 count run like 5.1 just to get over that bridge and come back. <laughs> Guys, as we close here, give us, a, a, again, promote yourselves, promote the events, promote the next event that's happening. Tell uh, the listeners how they can find you guys, again, online, and, uh, you know, both for the, the climbing, but as well as these events events so we can get some of these folks registered and start uh, start their training uh, maybe tomorrow yeah. for the next event. That'd be great. Actually, we have an event this weekend. It's the Ancient Peaks Classic up at Santa Margarita Ranch. It's a mountain bike race. It's a cross-country dual slalom and downhill race. Uh, you can find out more information at ancientpeaksclassic.com or you can visit our main website, which is alloutevents.com, and that links to all of our different events. Um, and then we also run Slow Up Climbing. It's slo-opclimbing.org, uh, and you can see find us down at 289 Prado Road, and uh, we have open hours from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. Monday through Thursday, and you can come check us out. And uh, if you become a member, it's 24/7 access. What, awesome. Uh, 
Uh, I'm sorry, I gotta ask. You said uh, open climbing. What do they gotta bring? And how much is it gonna cost them? Okay, open climbing is ten bucks. Uh, you don't have to bring anything. Preferably, you wear clothes. Um. <laughs> but those, but again, those are optional. We want to make sure our listeners know that that is optional. That um, is optional. Um, underwear is, is definitely encouraged. Um, but not mandatory. Again, <laughs> not, not mandatory. For you, it's not. <laughs> and then uh, we actually provide uh, climbing shoes if you don't have any. And uh, there's random chalk around. So awesome. You don't this really is a, need any equipment. This is a problem. We try to get to break, and uh, we don't get to break on time. It uh, ends up in naked climbing. You know, uh, slowwalkclimbing.org and alloutevents.com. Yishai, Kristen Horowitz, thanks so much for coming in studio. Thanks for having us. Uh, okay, next, we're going to come up next. Trevor Mara, master trainer, as well as your chance to win a $20 gift card to our favorite Mediterranean food on the Central Coast, Jaffa Cafe. with Living the Run. <laughs> Great great interview with Yishai and Kristen Horowitz. If you guys missed that, you're just tuning into the show on Living the Run here on ESPN 1280. Check them out. We'll post the podcast on livingtherun.com or you can find us on facebook.com. We'll put that up. It uh, also will be live on video via YouTube. We are fortunate to be joined now by master trainer at Kennedy Club Fitness, uh, Trevor Merrim. He's got 12 years of uh, experience in biomechanics and athletic skills training. Prior to fitness, uh, Trevor was playing professional soccer, including internationally for Millwall's Division II team. Trained in cr- cranial sacral therapy from the Upledger Institute, doing all kinds of stuff. Master trainer in Dallas. Uh, he was uh, one of the top trainers there in LA, picked by uh, Sports Club of LA. Trevor Merrim, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs> well, the first question I got to say is, is, and probably the most important, and the most important thing to you is, is that BMX bike you got, Weston. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're Absolutely trying. the most important question. <laughs> that, that BMX bike is fantastic. Uh, and, you know, the big question there was, is, was that for you more? Or, <laughs> or was that for, you, for your son? <laughs> Absolutely. That was not for me. I... Mean, I <laughs> Will not ride it at all. I've actually already ridden it on the uh, downtown Santa Rosa skate park. <laughs> Many occasions, I saw you. You looked like you were itching at the bit to uh, get some, uh, get yourself doing a few tricks. Yeah, but absolutely. Daddy, I don't want a bike. Yes, you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually awesome to see him ride. He was really excited. He actually pulled me aside in the middle of like uh, building his Lego castle or something, and and said, "You know what, Dad." I love my bike. You know, that was just, just totally out of the blue. He, he really just for sure loves it. So I'm really looking forward to getting him more time at the skate park. Yeah. Uh, that's, when he, that's when he was like, oh, you like it? Let me take you out front and show you some more stuff. Check this out. <laughs> what I can do. Wait, that kind of side sideways me into the uh, extreme fitness trends, uh, extreme sports like biking or BMX. Um, there's no right way to exercise, but there are lots of wrong ways, right? There's no specific way that we should exercise. Like people want a specific pill they can take, right? To, to make take, them buff. I, I or, take the med. Yeah. Oh yeah. The magic okay. pill. Yeah. Everybody right. wants it. You can get everybody it. Everybody wants that. Like your local health food plug. Extreme fitness training or functional fitness training or you know what? I'm only doing plyometrics. I heard that gets huge, right? And no. And the infomercial. Um, the infomercials abound on this stuff. I mean, uh, for those that are watching the TV or listening to uh, radio on the weekend, it seems like there's a new infomercial every week about absolutely. how to get those abdomen stronger, the core <laughs> strength. Uh, and, just use this tool. Um, so talk to us about that because uh, you absolutely. know I want I want the listeners to hear that again that statement that says there is no necessarily right way to exercise but there sure are a lot of wrong ways to exercise what do you mean by uh, wrong ways to exercise here well um i've used a lot of examples i've done this lecture before using the exact same title um demonstrating because that really really gives a good example of um, bad position or it could be a detrimental position 
Have you ever seen, um, well, let's bench press is a really, really popular exercise to do in the in the weight room. The staple of my workout. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Bench yeah. Press. Yeah. And, and look, oh, the, sta- oh. the, the staple of functionality, right? I mean, everybody needs to be able to <laughs> bench to press be 300 pounds. Yeah. And you need to be able to curl, and you need to be able to do a thousand sit-ups Okay, a but day. people are still doing old school. you got to hit the bar to the chest, otherwise it doesn't count. <laughs> Absolutely wrong. I have really long limbs and a tiny chest, so that means i got to go four times as far, and the leverage is way more. What you're missing is you got to bounce it off your sternum right, with right, reckless right. abandon. That's what that's what you got to do. <laughs> How in the world else are you going to get up 300 pounds? Come on. What sounds to me like you're saying, we talked about this just a little earlier with Paul, was is that it sounds to me that your training philosophy is getting around individualizing the treatment to the body type that presents in front of you. Is that what you're saying? No doubt. Absolutely. Very well stated. Now, uh, there's a, a lot of rhetoric, if you will, that I that I use a lot uh, commonly with a lot of my clientele is one is keep on doing what you've always done. If you want to keep on getting what you've always got, so many people love to go in and work really hard, or if they push through, they're just going to finally overcome those plateaus of those goals that are not quite reaching yet. Absolutely untrue. Um, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger? Mm, untrue, as far as I know, especially the way I kind of pull people's routine and strengths and weaknesses out and while I work on people. So that, that's a huge part of what I'm really tackling with the people of my clientele. Isn't necessarily just their mentality, um, but a huge part of my fitness and my biomechanics is focused on their weaknesses. Now it gets extraordinarily complex really quick. You know that very well. So there's a whole lot of intense systems of muscle testing, range of motion testing. Um, it gets extraordinarily uh, complex very quickly. So I don't want to bore you with all the science behind that, but. Um, uh, well, it, really it, won't be bo- it won't be boring to us at all. I mean, I, some of this stuff is actually really, really great. Without getting into too much detail, talk about the common, the most common things you're seeing biomechanically in folks, whether it be weaknesses or their strengths, such that these are the things, the kinks that you're trying to work out. From where maybe they had gotten into those wrong ways of exercise, as you're noting, and you have to kind of pull them back out of that to help them gain that stability. What are those just, you know, t- take it to, uh, top common weaknesses of a male versus female or or just uh, you know the average person that's come into you you know what does it seem like you repeatedly see over and over and over that you're helping people correct in the training sessions that's a very um, fantastic question because I I don't think there are any common weaknesses do you, like male female if you break out any kind of stereotypes young old big muscles or a super athlete or everybody's going to be different even if it's a shoulder issue on the same thing and you're on the same side and you have the same identical build and capability for an athlete you're going to have a whole lot even if it's a rotator cuff right you'll have a whole lot every individual will compensate and figure out how to heal themselves and get the same actions done per se in different manners. Absolutely. Okay, so I break those down really intensely pertaining to gross movement patterns as well as fine movement patterns within the shoulder, within the shoulder complex, within right below it in the thoracic spine, it, more in the lumbar, thoracic, femoral movements. Okay, so it's heel striking. I mean, it's going to get really, really extensive. And we break out the movements, seeing people move in different types of forms and fashions, pulls, pushes, squats. I could keep on going and going and going. So gait, stride, okay. Um, I do a lot of different types of therapies as well. So it's not necessarily just athletes. It's not necessarily just pre and postnatal. It's not necessarily just cranial sacral. I, I do a whole lot of mixture of all these types of therapies and disciplines. As, as well as, you know, not necessarily just fixing people on the table. I, I, as soon as I can, I get them involved doing isometrics, and then we're starting to do a program design and infiltrating that, seeing, making sure that they can keep their weaknesses being worked on, and eventually they'll become strengths just like everything else. Yeah, it sounds like you're personalizing it to them. You know, we're, we're talking uh, to Trevor Merrim here, Master Trainer at Kennedy Club Fitness, here on Living the Run. You can listen to us on ESPN Radio, 1280 here, AM. Uh, 
uh, you know, talk about a little bit because you're talking about different sessions. And one thing that always concerns people, and I heard this phrase used uh, once, was is transactional versus transformational. And I think one thing that people uh, think about when they come to a trainer and they're spending money, oftentimes they feel like they're going through a transaction, mm-hmm. but they don't feel like there's a ton of change uh, and they don't feel like there's a transformation. So transaction versus transformation. How long, because we know, uh, you know, it takes a while to learn some of these skills, to get through these weaknesses. What are you doing for people? What kind of plans are you putting out there for people such that, you know, is it, you expect to see changes in four visits, six visits, two times a week? What, what are the kind of, uh, some of the things that are going on there? Once again, that absolute fantastic question. That's very hard to um, speculate. You know, some people say, well, I don't think I need much work. You know, I'm, I'm strong already. I just got this one little issue. And it turns out it not, that working on that one little issue un, unfolds a whole lot of just entourage of other different issues. Um, so sometimes I'll even think that that they're going to be fantastic. They were very responsive to therapy and all that. We're already talking about a program impl- implementation. And these guys are already really good with their body and, and in tune with their body and can actually use it well already. But it takes a really long time to some of these athletes who are awesome with their body to learn something simple. So it, it's, it's and vice versa. Paul, you, does that apply to you? Yeah. What? <laughs> what part? All of this applies yeah. to me. The, I'm, thinking of, I'm thinking of, man, I used to be good at stuff. Yeah. <laughs> what I was thinking is, is, I mean, what happens if a guy like Paul Tarek, who comes in with no weaknesses, uh, shows up uh, shows up and presents in front of the Now you're just office. lying. Yeah. Now you're just telling lies yeah. right on the radio. Uh, high-end <laughs> sports or athletes, I should say, usually are, are just at the best at hiding their compensations or overcoming their compensations, still figuring out I, I how to compensate. I was, I was a year Tremendous out of college. point right there. I was a year to two out of, two years out of college before I finally learned how to run correctly. <laughs> and, it's, and it's not a joke. I yeah, mean, you, totally. you just you learn how to use other muscles. Absolutely. Uh, you know that shouldn't be. You know you shouldn't run with your hamstring or with your with your uh, quads and, and your hamstrings like most people do. But but uh, you know that's that's what I was doing. I didn't really know it came from the core. I didn't really understand how to use those muscles. Yeah, a large part of my practice is based in muscle activation. Uh, Greg Rob Scuff does MAT and um, absolutely brilliant man and I've, I follow a large portion of my practice be, based behind that therapy and that idea um, and a large part of that is quite different than a lot of the therapies or disciplines that will come with general body work um, a lot of body work you want to be able to manipulate and loosen up a lot of the tissue so I do at times or often uh, uh, use both I'll be able to get what joint loosened up, be able to gain the weakness as well. So, or sorry, gain the strength from where it was once weak. Sounds well. like so. you're using a, uh, quite a, you know, just a, a wide array of techniques. For those of you listening in, you know, if you want to uh, get in with Trevor at some time in a training session there at uh, Kennedy Club Fitness, uh, I know he's 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 open to do that, and we'll ask him here in a minute. But again, if you want something different, a little variety, some different technique, and really the reason why we want to bring Trevor in is is, is that idea of individualized treatment, not just the same routine somebody taking you through a bunch of machines uh, and just doing a circuit, but somebody who will do that individualized treatment. As we go here, Trevor, tell them how they can get a hold of you and uh, maybe what you're offering to the listeners uh, here um, to maybe get a shot. Some of these listeners I know, they're looking for a trainer. They don't know how to select one. Uh, Tell us how they find you and and, uh, go from there. Well, um, what you can do is call Kennedy Club directly. Um, I actually wildly don't know the number right off the top of my head. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> call Kennedy Club Fitness. You can find them easily online here. And you will be able to have me call you right back with a, probably a message from my director right into me very quickly. She'll be able to immediately get a response into me, and I'll be able to respond within 24 hours. It should be. Um, that is actually the most direct and easiest way to be able to get hold of me. Fantastic. If you're looking for uh, a trainer, check out Trevor Merrim, Kennedy Club Fitness. When we return, we will go tips and takeaways. Paul Tarek, great show today. We'll be back for wrap-up in moments.